Overlanding has become so popular right now that it seems every company is trying to cash in on every little angle and every little market available from things that you can slap on your vehicle to things you slap on your tent. There's something for everyone now in the Overland community. And what's awesome about that is not only all of the choices we have, but a lot of them are high quality. But sadly, that also makes them expensive. And for a lot of us, that budget is a huge obstacle when we try to build and outfit our vehicles. Well, do I want $300 on a nice shiny Alu box or do I want $300 on Max Tracks or do I just want to spend $300 on gas? So for today, we're going to have a little game. It's being the holiday season and all, and we are going to list our five favorite items of kit that we have, which can be had for under $50. And I want you guys to be thinking about the piece of kit you have that's under $50. And if you feel inclined, hit the comment button and share that with us. All right, let's get started. All right, honorable mention goes to the DeWalt DCL 050 work light. Now, why do I put this as an honorable mention? Well, it's because the work light costs between 40 and $45, so it meets the criteria of this challenge, but it doesn't include the battery. So if you already have DeWalt power tools and you're already part of the system, then, and you don't have this work light, then stop the video now, get in your car, go to the nearest hardware store, order off of Amazon, whatever, and just get one, because this thing is just phenomenal. If you're not part of the system, I would almost recommend the DeWalt system. I'm kind of a DeWalt fan, I'll admit that up front, but I would almost recommend the DeWalt system just for their lights, I love it. Now, once you get the battery, which is kind of expensive, batteries are about, for a five amp hour is around $60 or so, so you're looking at about $100 now. But what I really like about this, and I don't recall the lumens off the top of my head, it lasts forever with this five amp hour battery on it. And when the battery starts to go dead, it will flash. Just once to catch your attention, and then it won't flash for a long time. Then it'll flash again to remind you, but you can keep working. You actually have about an hour's worth of life left when this thing starts flashing, then it'll start flashing really quick until it finally dies. And, and that's because many contractors which use these have a group of DeWalt batteries. So you can just at your convenience, shut it down, swap the battery out, put the other one on the charger and you're good to go. If you watch any of my do it yourself videos, if you have a good eye, you'll see this in the back of the frame. There's not anything I do maintenance wise where this light isn't part of it. I can, I can hang, I can bend it, I can move it into tight spots. It sits really nice on its side. You can, you can just, it's just so flexible. In fact, um, my favorite story with this light is my cousin was on his way to Moab and he calls me up and he said his Jeep XJ, I think the radiator sprung a leak or one of his hose bursts. And he calls me up and he says, we gotta, we gotta replace the radiator on here. So we meet up in town and we go to the auto parts store and we bought everything for a cooling system over, overhaul, radiator, thermostat, hoses, fan clutch, everything for that Jeep XJ. And we piled it in my truck and we drove out the canyon, out to the boondocks in the middle of nowhere where he was and hooked up these lights and we had that whole thing swapped off, off the side of the road at three in the morning and we really couldn't have done it without really good LEDs like this. So this is an amazing, an amazing piece of kit without the battery. If you've got a battery, it is under $50 and it's one that I would highly recommend. And it's one that I take anywhere. So number five for me is the 12 volt road pro portable stove. Now I won't spend a lot of time on this. I have actually done an extensive review of this piece of product and it's starting to show its wear a little bit, but how many of us are sick and tired of cold cut sandwiches on the trail or something that just fits in the cooler? And yet we spend a lot of time at dinner making these fantastic Dutch oven or cast iron meals. And we spend a lot of time on our dinner and we have a lot left over, but at lunchtime we're all on the road and we end up with sandwiches or crackers and cheese or something. Now with the 12 volt portable stove, you get a tin foil liner and put your leftovers in here, close it, plug it in, 30 minutes later, you start smelling that lovely meal you had before, pull off the side and you're good to go. 
This year we've done Mexican food in it, we've done Chinese food in it, we've warmed up pizza in this. Um, we obviously have done the, we had leftover Texas Roadhouse we did one year. I mean, this thing is just flexible and at Walmart it's about $33. So something to consider if you don't already have one for under 50 bucks. Number four, how many of us have packed, own about a dozen of these traditional folding camp chairs? Well, when you have a family of five or even two, they're kind of annoying to pack into a vehicle, especially if you've got a narrow load space. Now, my brother-in-law at Dirt, Path, Dirt Paths Overland found that problem with his family of four trying to fit everything into the back of his WK2 Grand Cherokee. And he came up with these miniature backpacking lightweight camp chairs. Now these are the Ozark Trail brand, um, Walmart's budget brand. And they're, they're kind of expensive on their own compared to a standard camp chair, they're about 20 bucks. But what's amazing is how compact, and this is it's actually full of a lot of air right now, it shrinks up even more. I have a family of five and it's just amazing that we can just stick these in and I can run a strap through all five of these and load them up nice and neatly in the back. Now, they're a little bit more involved to set up. If you haven't seen these. It's what I'm sitting in right now. You got this maze of parts which you gotta stick in the slots. Once you've set the parts up, you just take the chair and fit the corners in the grooves and then eventually and there you have it you got your camp chair now if you've got room in your vehicle sure go ahead these are god you can get cheap ones for like five bucks a piece now go ahead and use those if you've got the room but if you're constrained in your spa load space requirements man grab these chairs and just pack them up and our family has loved those for this year's traveling. Yet, how many of us struggle to justify a single set of Max Tracks, let alone spending $200 to $300 on heavy duty waterproof boxes? Well, here's an alternative. The MTM ACR8 Ammo Crate. The beauty of ammo boxes is they have to keep things dry and so you have the gasketed seal right here for waterproofing. You've got robust heavy duty plastic. These boxes stack, I own two of them and you can see I've got, this one has my air compressor in it, um, toe strap. And the beauty of this thing, and this is why it is number three on our list, is these boxes are only roughly about $18 a piece. And so you can get a few of these without breaking the bank while you save up for your nice, heavy duty, shiny alu boxes. I read somewhere that you tend to go places more if it's easy to pack. And so what we have liked to do is just put everything into these boxes so that we can quickly load them and unload out of our vehicle. Because we use our vehicles as daily drivers. Typically when all four wheels are connected to this vehicle, this is the one I drive to work and the GX is the one my wife drives with everyone around. So we can't leave these vehicles in overland trim. So we have a lot of our important pieces of gear in these ammo crates and we load them into our vehicles when we go adventuring and then we pull them off when we're done with our day trips. So eventually, like you guys, we probably wanna get us some nice fancy boxes, but until then, these ammo crates are awesome. So for number two though, my suggestion is some good old fashioned hardbound books. These hardback backcountry adventures by Peter Massey are an awesome resource. You've got the, this one for the Colorado area. You've got the whole first part, the history of each mine and ghost town. And then you have the trail reviews in the corner with GPS coordinates, um, little blurbs and descriptions about the trails, how difficult they are, information on where the waypoints are, anything you would see in a guidebook. Now the beauty of the Peter Massey books is this is thousands of miles of off pavement trails, but his most difficult trail in these books are stock rated. And so you don't even need 
a big vehicle with modifications to enjoy every bit of history in this huge book for just the state of Colorado. Now he's got books for Colorado, he's got Utah, he's got Arizona, he's got some volumes for um, California. Now you can go on eBay and try to find these old bound books, these older out of print versions, or he split them up into smaller ones which you can get on Amazon right now. Now some other suggestions if you want a little more difficulty than the Peter Massey is many of you have probably seen this one in the bookstores around Moab if you visited there lately. This is um, Charles, Charles Wells guide to back road driving in Moab and he splits them up in easy, moderate and difficult categories and he's got some of the more difficult trails in the Moab area here. Now I put off buying this book because a lot of these trails I grew up on. Um, we've been going Moab ever since I was a kid back I think how 1989 or 1990. So most of these I have already seen but there's a couple that I haven't so I finally just bought it on the internet mainly to support Mr. Wells and this excellent guidebook which he has put on. If you are planning to explore the Moab area and you really don't know much about it, man, this is a must have for your vehicle. If you wanna know the San Rafael Swell area, this is a new book by Christian Probosco, fellow member on Expedition Utah. Mr. Probosco, he's a, he's a bona fide desert rat and he's got really good information in here of his back off trail wandering in his old CJ5. This is a first edition, so it's not as refined as far as the maps and there's no color photos. As far as the maps and the layout is concerned, I mean, you have to get to um, clear down in page 59. So I had to mark that there for the, for the list of trails. But he has some that um, Peter Massey wouldn't have in the San Rafael region, such as um, Devil's Racetrack and some of the other more difficult trails that you do need modified. But if you want to know the history of the, the San Rafael Swell area, this book, um, Back Roads of Utah San Rafael Swell, is highly recommended. And finally, another one of my favorites is, many of you probably have heard of this. If you haven't, man, check it out. This is Overland Journal. It is made by Scott Brady and company who founded um, Expedition Portal. This is the magazine version of essentially essentially their same company. What's awesome about this book is it is like the National Geographic of, of off-road and overlanding. It is, it is just amazing the way this, this book is put together. It is just fun to have. I don't throw any of these away. The photography in here, the photography standards are just top-notch. The stories in here are all multi-day and they're all from all over the world. There's stories of people traveling through Iran Pakistan, Namibia, Africa, South America, all over the world. And there's still Utah, there's still Colorado, and there's still a lot of trail ideas that I can feasibly do. Even though I'm not gonna be crossing Greenland, I could easily plan a week-long expedition down in New Mexico. At the end of these, there's always an Overland Chef version, which I really like, to um, ideas on what to cook over the campfire that's, you know, not your standard fare. It's got gear sections, you've got exploration sections. This thing, man, a subscription to this is highly, highly recommended. And number one for our under $50 challenge is the 17 ounce vacuum sealed water bottle. I'm sure many of you right now have your own favorite type of vacuum insulated water bottle. But what I like about these over the typical Yeti cup is the insulated lid with the gasket on it and that makes these things maintain their temperature so much better these we don't even well it's kind of annoying to fit ice in the top that's the problem and then if you manage to get small ice cubes and stuff it full of ice then a 17 ounce capacity you can't really fit very much water in there but we found that really there's no need for ice in these just fill it up with chilled water or warm water hot water if that's your thing and with the insulated lid, it keeps it there. Now ours have been beat to crap and dinged. It falls apart. The paint is pitted on both of these and they're just heavy duty, solid, and they're just awesome. Likewise, if you're off-roading with kids, these Contigo Auto Seal 
11 or 14 ounce water bottles come in a two pack for like 11 and 12 dollars so if you're a little too cheap like me to give them nice 28 dollars water bottles that are vacuum sealed yet you're sick and tired of your kids taking plastic water bottles and making a mess and just having to deal with plastic water bottles or even cheap water bottles that leak all over the place and you're just frustrated at the mess that's making in the back seat of your vehicle consider these auto seal water bottles which are just awesome they've got a gasket in there they're not vacuum sealed but they've got a, a gasket system and they're heavy duty the kids can throw them around whatever and they're not these are just great if you have young kids or those you're not ready to spend the money for a nice vacuum seal cups for your little kids because they'll just trash it more than we already trash ours or worse lose them so there you have it there is our 2019 top five pieces of kit gear list for under fifty dollars why don't you like comment and subscribe and tell us what your favorite piece of kit is that is under the fifty dollar limit thanks and until next time